The story is set in 2125 in a sort of Orwellian future. Um, the main character Belfast gets his blueprints for a weapon stolen and he ends up hiring this team called Nexus to get it back for him. The team has Bailey, a blind dart player, Walter, a parkourist, Gordon, the strong man type brawler, and his wife Phyllis, the poisons expert. Then you have the main antagonist Virgil, who runs a security company overlooking and oppressing the entire city. He's brainwashing the civilians and hiding anyone that acts out behind these holographic walls. So the story follows Belfast and Nexus as they try to get his blueprints back and indirectly cause a rise up against Virgil from the people. The premise was created at a late night gaming session during the holidays as a comic book. I jotted down a few ideas and sketches and when we were asked for a story in week one, I decided it might be pretty cool to pitch it for the class. When the storyboards were finalised by the design team, we began location scouting. The challenge with this was finding a location which not only matched the storyboards, but we were able to legally shoot in and we were able to get enough equipment in for the shoot. Okay, during the testing process, we would test possible lens choices. We would test lighting and for any unforeseen circumstances which may have arisen during the shoot itself. This helps, in the end, this helped narrow down the amount of choices we had between locations. After we had settled on a concept idea, we had to figure out how to implement the idea into a well-structured and dynamic trailer. Uh, we looked at a lot of blockbuster Hollywood films because they have great VFX um, to try and get an idea of timing and, and speed and uh, storytelling. Uh, we ended up deciding to use the Inception trailer as our template and when we were figuring out what to shoot, we looked at the framing and content of other films and how they could tell a story dynamically in one frame. That's how we created our first Nexus storyboard. We then went on to create the final concept art for every shot, which included our location, um, a very loose location, an idea of who was in the shot and what VFX we would use. And this is how we got to the point where we knew exactly what we had to shoot. Um, so we started finding actors, starting with the main characters and working back to extras and bit parts. And then it was on to location scouting. Okay, so once the locations and the actors have been finalised, that's when production began. The Kotar shoot was probably one of the larger shoots we did of the entire project. The scenes which we shot during the night were of um, Belfast toasting at a party, Gordon at a bar, and of Phyllis. We had a sequence of shots of her poisoning a man and walking off. The restaurant we were filming at had had a wedding reception the evening before and had left their props from their night over and we were able to use it for the props in our shoot. For the um, shot of Belfast Toast in the party we were using a crane which none of us had actually used before. And we were using this to have a shot starting at head height going up to reveal all the guests at the party. For this shoot uh, the lights we would normally use were not going to be sufficient for the, for the area of the, of the shoot so much to our luck again Jared had ordered in some large lights which had arrived the previous week. We were able to use them and solve that problem. On top of that, everyone, all the all the extras looked absolutely amazing. Actors perfectly, great direction, everything went smoother. Yeah, so the, um, the overhead crane shot was sh one of the last shots on one of the days and it was to to be used to push push over one of the one of the actors to 
sort of emulate um, him standing on the top of a giant building. So um, some of the problems that were that had arisen during that shoot were was basically the green screen would crinkle after every take. So we had um, James down in there, hands and knees, I think, sorting it out. The um, camera was in a location where you couldn't really change the settings or pull focus or anything. So once you got going, that was basically it. And just getting some steady movement with the entire contraption as well was a bit of an issue due to its weight. The jump shot, the way it was conceived, it was always planned to be, to be shot on green screen. But um, due to the angle of the shot in the green space, it would continually get the, get the roof in, which wasn't green. So that was going to be a massive issue with keying out the actor. I think after a lot of back and forth, Rena came up with the idea to, to move the, the shoot outside and use the portable green screens. We had about, had about 12 people up holding, holding the portable green screens from the second level, whilst we had um, young Walter jumping from one of the barbecue, barbecue benches onto the safety mat. So in the end, that shot worked well, and given the circumstances. I was assigned the task of creating the 3D drone for our production uh, and I worked pretty collaboratively with the artists, the creative artists in our group um, to create an ominous looking drone um, that served our purposes for the production. We needed to ensure that, I remain, that it remained a Sentry style camera surveillance drone and I believe we achieved this quite successfully. Um, I then used the concept art that was provided by the creative team to do this. This gave me a much better understanding of what the drone would look like and how I could create it in the 3D modeling program 3D Studio Max. I was pretty proud with the end result of the drone since I used a lot of new methods that I hadn't worked with before which gave me a much greater understanding of how the modeling process worked. I was assigned to do the opening shot, the panoramic shot, the money shot. It was my most difficult shot and I had to hit that wow factor. Um, the plate footage I received was royalty free footage of a helicopter in the shot of New York. Since it's a uh, moving footage, putting buildings, cars and other stuff that had to be added in the shot was very difficult. The best part of this process was texturing the 3D buildings and making them look good. What I found the most difficult about this process was masking the buildings to make them look like they are part of the shot. Uh, my shot is a panorama shot of New York City circa 21-25 going through a blackout. The only way to really do this would be to do a day to night shot. So um, when doing a day to night shot, firstly you need to get the plate photography which is best taken on an overcast day. This is to reduce the hard shadows that are non-existent at night time. So after, after the play photography was taken, which was actually taken on one of the first days of location scouting, I had to build up the city to make it look a little bit more futuristic. So this was done in Photoshop and 3ds Max. After the buildings had been put in place, I went through the painstaking task of adding in each individual light to the building. And once, um, once the file had been brought into After Effects, I had to add a glow onto each of the lights, um, secondary glow from the lights, atmospherics through the city, and some futuristic flying cars. Um, once all this had been done, I had to turn the lights off. And the problem with turning the lights off was doing it so it didn't look like a pattern. After that I added in a night sky which would become more apparent as the lights turned off. And um, from there a final colour correction was given to the piece and voila. When I think about what we got done, what we achieved in 17 weeks with 17 students of varying abilities and two teachers assisting us, it just blows my mind. The final product is unbelievable, more than I ever imag imagined it could be. And I know that without the teachers imparting their awesome knowledge on us, <laughs> it wouldn't be what it is. And I'm just over the moon at how